Hollywood actress Joan Crawford was unable to have children. Her first marriage to Douglas Fairbanks Jr. from 1929 to 1933 was childless, leading to their divorce. Joan married Franchatone in 1935 and again failed to become a mother. After several failed attempts to bear a child and a divorce, Crawford became desperate and decided to take in an adopted baby. Men appeared in her life and disappeared, and she was in dire need of the unconditional and selfless love that only a child could give. Joan was divorced, and the laws of California did not allow her to adopt children within the state. So she turned to a well-known agency in another state for this procedure. Crawford adopted the baby girl, who was a few months old, in 1939, and named her Joan Crawford Jr. over time. She realized that there should only be one real Joan Crawford, and her adopted daughter was named Christina. The example of your parents affects the kind of family you make. Miss Crawford always repeated, she knew what she was talking about. Her own childhood was not cloudless. Her father left the family when Lucille Fayless Sewer, the future Joan Crawford, was ten months old, and by the time she turned five, she had a third stepfather. The family barely made ends meet, lived in poverty, and caused Lucille's lifelong hatred of dirt and disorder. The girl had to work to pay for her studies at Street Ains College, scrubbing floors and cooking. Soon she became a chorister on Broadway and was noticed by Metro Goldwyn Mayer studio bosses in 1924. The girl had a bright personality and memorable appearance. High cheekbones, flawless facial oval, capriciously curved lips, and large eyes. Strong character, great plastic, and physical attractiveness favorably distinguished Joan among thousands of starlets, and she always used to get what she wanted. Overcoming poverty and hardship, Crawford was at the top of Hollywood Olympus. A turbulent personal life, several marriages, a novel with Clark Gable, a lot of scandals and rumors around her name. And here. Miss Crawford becomes an exemplary mother at the age of about 35 years. Her act, which was highly praised in popular magazines about happy family life, allowed to talk about Joan as a generous woman with a kind heart. The baby girl she adopted was the relinquished child of an American underage mother and a married sailor who eloped after a brief affair with his lawful wife. The girl was born on June 11, 1939, and her mother didn't want her. After paying a tidy sum Joan, through an adoption agency, drew up the necessary papers and took the child. Christina settled with her adoptive mother in a spacious house in Brentwood, Los Angeles, amidst luxury. The girl's fairy tale life began. Expensive gifts and toys, beautiful clothes, nannies and cooks, pool and outings, children's parties, and wonderful treats. Miss Crawford dressed her daughter up like a doll and told everyone, Tina is my favorite girl, my angel. Christina, in turn, had to address Joan only as Dear Mommy. Photos Blonde Baby and Movie Star decorated the covers of magazines and Joan became an example of an ideal mother. On July 21, 1942, Crawford married actor Philip Terry, and the couple adopted a boy named Christopher. In 1946, the marriage broke up, and in the vague childhood memory of Christine remained vague pictures of family scenes. Mom crying. Somewhere falls and broken dishes. Philip leaves, so Mom will no longer cry. After the divorce, Crawford retained custody of both children. Joan led a bohemian lifestyle and was often filmed, but tried to pay a lot of attention to the children. In 1947, Crawford, who dreamed of a large family, became a mother of many children. She adopted twin girls, which she named Cindy and Kathy. The girl's mother died after childbirth from kidney failure, and the father refused to give up the children. Fame, money, and attention of men periodically blew Joan Crawford head. She never differed from the balanced behavior, but for little pristine mother up to a time remained the closest and most beloved person. A few years later, the peculiarities of Tina's character became apparent. The girl grew incredibly willful, stubborn, and spoiled, and the foster mother tried to bring her up in strictness and correct her behavior. Each child had their own responsibilities around the house. Joan didn't want them to grow up to be spoiled Hollywood brats. Crawford, of course, it was difficult to bring up four children, or even five, 
and the family for a year lived an adopted boy, which then, coming to her senses, returned the birth mother alone. It is quite possible that she was excessively strict. I was a strict stickler for discipline, perhaps even too strict at times, but my God, what is life without discipline? Joan Crawford admitted. Joan was noticeably more demanding of Christina than she was of her younger children. There is a famous incident which was narrated by an adult Christina. Falling asleep in her bedroom, the girl finger traced a pattern on the expensive wallpaper until she dug a hole in the wall to the plaster. Seeing this ugliness, Joan was furious and as a punishment cut Christine's favorite yellow dress with scissors. The childish resentment against her mother was remembered for the rest of her life, even though the number of Christina's dresses numbered in the dozens. Tina would look at the girls of her age. Not many are lucky to have a movie star mother. At the age of 10, Christina was given to the elite school Chadwick in Palos Verdes. With her mother, she saw only on vacations and vacations. In this school, attended the children of Hollywood celebrities. After graduating from the prestigious boarding school, Christina moved from California to Pittsburgh to enter the theater school Carnegie Mellon. Joan paid for Christina's acting studies, but the girl dropped out of college after only one semester and then moved to New York, where she continued her acting education. In 1955, Joan Crawford married her fourth husband, Alfred Steele, president of Pepsi-Cola. This late marriage turned out to be for the actress happy, not without jealousy. At times, Joan claimed that Christina tried to flirt with Alfred Steele. For obvious reasons, the aging star tried to limit communication with her young daughter. Christina felt herself an extra person in the family and above all a worthless addition to her talented mother. The girl did not grab stars from the sky, although and performed on the Broadway stage. In 1960, thanks to her mother's connections in the movie, Christine received a supporting role in the crime drama The Power of Impulse, released in 1961. In 1961, she got a small role as Monica George in the musical Savage, a movie starring Elvis Presley. What followed were several passable movies with minor roles. In October 1965, Tina appeared in Neil Simon's Barefoot in the Park with actress Myrna Loy, a friend of her mother, but was soon removed from filming as the cast complained about Christina's unprofessional behavior and bad character. She was considered a fairly capable actress, but she was very difficult to work with on set. Myrna Loy called her stubborn, stating in her autobiography Genesis and Becoming. We didn't have any problems with Barefoot in the Park until Christina came along. The thought of Joan's daughter playing the part thrilled me until I discovered how stubborn this child was. I have never known anyone like her, ever. Her stubbornness was truly unbelievable. She wouldn't do a single thing that was asked of her. Tina, 28, played the role of Joan Kane on the soap opera Secret Storm in New York. In October 1968, she suffered health problems and underwent emergency surgery for an ovarian cyst. While Tina was in the hospital recovering from the emergency surgery, producer Gloria Monti and television executives asked Joan to replace her daughter in the production. Joan Crawford agreed, although she did so reluctantly, realizing that otherwise Christine would be replaced by another actress and the role would be lost to her. After a few episodes with Joan audience doubled, much to the dismay of Christine, who from resentment of her mother left the series. Producers removed the role of Joan Kane, explaining that this storyline has exhausted itself. The situation was heating up and the relationship between Christine and Joan escalated. The day came when the daughter sat down for a book of memories of her childhood and planned to denigrate her adoptive mother. Behind the glossy picture of magazines lurked another life of the Crawford family and Christina decided to tell about it. She adopted us for publicity, she said. Each year, the Crawford children were allowed to choose only one gift from the many on Christmas or their birthdays, while all the others were distributed to children's hospitals or charitable organizations. The mother would then ask the children to write thank you cards to the givers for the gifts they were not allowed to keep. It was all about power and deprivation. I was completely mistrusted as a child. I felt completely alone, Christina wrote. On the morning of May 10, 1977, Joan Crawford died of a heart attack in her Manhattan apartment. All of the children, including Christina and Christopher, 
read their adoptive mother's will. In the final version of her will, which was written on October 28, 1976, Crawford left a significant amount to various charities and bequeathed to her adopted daughters Cindy and Kathy $77,500 each, while leaving Christina and Christopher not a dime. The brother and sister were shocked. Their mother had treacherously disinherited them, stating in the will that the reason is well known to them. Christina and Christopher challenged the will, declaring that Sister Kathy had deliberately taken advantage of her weakness and distorted mental and physical condition to ingratiate herself with Joan. Disinherited Christine decided to take revenge. A year after her death, Joan published a book, Dear Mommy, which made a great resonance. Joan Crawford was exposed as a monster, evil and cruel, inattentive and deceitful, prone to unpredictable outbursts of rage, drinking heavily and changing men. Christine described how Joan dragged her out of bed in the middle of the night when she was nine years old and hit her over the head with a can of scouring powder for leaving soap scum on the bathroom floor. The adopted daughter claimed her mother beat her with a clothes hanger, and when she refused to eat a steak with blood on it, told a maid to put the plate in the refrigerator and not give her any other food until Tina finished her dinner. The allegations were made public after Joan Crawford's death. She could neither confirm nor deny her version of what happened anymore. Crawford's younger children, Cindy and Kathy, stated that Joan was always a loving and attentive mother. In 1981, an adaptation of the book was released in which Faye Dunaway played Joan Crawford. By the way, Faye was in this negative role, so convincing that she almost ruined her career. Christine in her personal life was not happy. Three marriages that ended in divorce, a severe stroke at the age of 42. She had no children, and her acting career did not succeed. Christine Crawford is now 84 years old. Friends, thank you for watching. Support the channel by subscribing, liking, or commenting. And see you in new exciting videos.